Okay, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for organizing the, the workshop. Uh, so, um, so this is joint work with Peter and Eric Bullman. Those are my main co-workers. And then we have uh, a number of younger people involved in the group as well. So I'm going to look at uh, two different topics. So the first is uh, stabilization and an alternative which, is, which we call basis removal. And uh, then I will turn into topology and shape optimization, which is sort of an application of the technology. Um, so, uh, the model problem we will look at is just the linear, linear elasticity. And then we proceed, as we have seen several times here. We put the domain into a background mesh, mark the active elements, and then we have uh, the face is where we sort of use the face penalty or ghost penalty. Uh, and the formulation, it is just sort of the usual weak statement plus the stabilization term. And we have seen the stabilization term here. It is sort of the jump here in the derivatives. We have higher order elements. And those are scaled here with uh, h to the 2l plus minus 1. So we use the minus one if we are on a Nietzsche type boundary and the plus if we are on a Neumann type boundary. And the reason is that on the Nietzsche boundary we need to make sure that we have this uh, inverse inequality which we use uh, to show coercivity. But on the Neumann boundary we basically only stabilize to get control of the L2 norm on the full element. And the reason we sort of distinguish is that we want to uh, use as weak stabilization as possible. Okay. So we also do the same thing on an interface and then it could either be this situation which we uh, which Peter had in his talk here that we basically have an interface that cap cuts through a background mesh but it could also be this situation where we have two completely different meshes on the left and right hand side which I think we saw for instance yesterday in the shell computation. And then we would use Nietzsche, uh, Nietzsche boundary condition, interface conditions here, and we would stabilize. And then the stabilization comes in from the left and from the right on both meshes. Okay. Okay. So that's the basic setting, and then we can prove all the basic results here for uh, typical second order elliptic problem. So you would have optimal order, a priori error estimates, and you would have a bound on the condition number as well. So basically you have all the results which you have for standard finite elements in this setting. Okay, so let's look at a couple of pictures here. So that's, uh, that's an example, and here you can see also we have a parametric part here, and we have some trim boundaries and so on. So here you can see sort of a zoom in, you can see the von Mises stresses here and you see the element sizes, you see a little bit of a discontinuity here in the von Mises stress. But in general it looks, looks very good. So here, this is an illustration of the, the effect of the stabilization. So you can see here we have stabilized and you get sort of this smooth extension of the, of the displacement outside of the domain. While without stabilization we, we get some elements that has a small intersection. Those will have a very crazy behavior outside. But we also see that if you look at the, the von Mises uh, uh, stresses here, there is virtually no difference in the two different situations. And now I should point out that here we are using C1, Q2. So those, those are second order spline functions. Um, so then of course if you use C1 functions, the stress will be continuous. Okay? So that gives us this, this additional <coughs> smoothness. Okay. So that leads me into this alternative idea of basis removal. So that, that is the trivial idea that you basically just remove a couple of functions that has a very small intersection. Okay? Uh, and how, how would you go about <coughs> doing that? 
Well, one, one approach is that you pick a norm and then you say I'm going to sort of remove a number of Bayesian functions, but I will not destroy convergence. I will keep optimal order convergence. And that basically translates into sort of estimating the energy norm of the functions you remove. Okay. So then you can actually, if you think of delta, let's look at this picture. So delta is the penetration sort of of the element. So you will have two different cases. You can have the most common case, it's a corner that goes into the domain. Or you could have like a face that goes into the domain. And if you think of a tensor product function, they kind of look fairly different in those two situations, right? Because let's say it's like an x squared in this direction and a y squared in this direction, then you will get something like fourth order in the diagonal direction. But here it will be second order. Okay. So this sort of, if you do some, uh, so this is a little bit preliminary, but uh, you will do some calculations and then you find these bounds. So delta over h is bounded by this expression, which in the case t equals 2, we will get 5 over 7. Okay? That's the corner situation. And then in the phase situation, we instead get h to the 5 over 3. So that's a stricter bound. In the phase situation, it's a stricter bound. Okay? Alright, so if you do that, you can prove optimal order energy norm bounds. So let's look at a couple of pictures. So no stabilization, looks completely crazy, but as soon as you're inside the domain, it looks good. No problem. Four basis function removed. Those are centered here at, at these points. You can see from missing stresses, no difference. Remove a couple of more, we continue. So now I remove 24 basis functions, see no difference. Looks pretty good. Okay, so that works well, and let's zoom in a little bit. So we are interested in computing stresses at the boundary, more or less pointwise. So why? Because this is what engineers typically use in durability analysis. So you can see that you get some bad behavior. When you remove one basis function, it kind of stabilizes. You see, this is what goes penalty stabilization the same effect, okay? And this is with C2Q3. Okay. So now of course the stresses are actually C1. So, okay, so that's the first part. And then we have the beam. Thin structure embedded in, uh, in, uh, <coughs> in, uh, in the background mesh. So you can see that you can actually solve an elastic problem. <coughs> which is which is a very thin domain as soon as you take sufficiently high order polynomials. So what I've done is just put in the beam here in a, in a tensor product mesh, just this good test, and added stabilization. So what I'm trying to say is that you can actually solve problems on very thin structures as long as you have a sufficiently rich uh, finite element space. Okay, so second part, optimization. So this is an area which, which we have been working on for a while now, and so it's, it's a new area for us, but we think this is a very nice application for cut element methods. Okay, so what we do is that we use a level set function, um, then we get the, the domain, we solve the elasticity problem, we compute a certain derivative, and then we solve an updating problem for, uh, for the level set. Okay? And the way we're going to do it is to use uh, a parabolic problem, like a phase field type approach. So you can see we start with material everywhere, and it removes down to a certain prescribed level. So you get these very thin structures. So here, for instance, it's important to use some kind of stabilization because otherwise we'll get crazy behavior. Then it disappears. And you can see that's the final one. And the load situation is that we have a vertical force out here. Okay? 
So how do how do we do this? Some details. We phrase it as an optimization problem. We have a bound of the number, the, the amount of material we can use, and we we optimize or minimize compliance. So that's the integral of sigma contracted with epsilon, and that basically gives us the stiffest structure. Okay. So what is the topological derivative? So the idea in the topological derivative is that you take the domain, you compute your functional j of omega, and then you remove a small ball at the point x hat. So you get the domain with a hole, with a ball removed, and you compute j, and then you form this difference quotient and you let the radius down to zero. So then in that point, you get what's called the topological derivative. So it basically measures the effect of removing material in one point. Okay? <coughs> so, you can do some calculations here, and you will see that this topological derivative, it is fairly close to the energy density. Okay? But it's not precisely the energy density because this tensor P is a little bit different. Alright. So this is known in the literature. Then we solve this parabolic equation to update the level set. So we have uh, a regularization <coughs> parameter tau. We have a topological derivative. And we have a constant which enforces the mass constraint. Okay, so if you think of the right hand side here, you see that if the topological derivative is large, then this thing will be positive and the level set function will increase. If t is small, this will be negative and then the level set function will decrease instead. And this enforces a movement of the level set function towards the stiffer structure. So let me just end up with a couple of examples here. So here we have the design volume. That's the active mesh. That's the final design. So it's a little bit rough here due to some visualization issues here. But here you can see that part of the domain is described by the design domain and part by the level. Okay. So because we're restricted on being in the in the design domain. A <coughs> little bit more complicated example, so this is an industrial uh, application. So you have two lo load cases, forces acting in this direction, and you have like a twisting moment where the forces act in the opposite direction. So these are the designs from a few different angles here. So you can see now we have certain parts which where we require to have material. Okay. So uh, so the situation in, in the software now is that we basically import two CAD models. One for the design volume and one where we uh, require uh, to have material. Okay. So here you can see sort of the resolution. You can see that we actually can represent very thin structures using this technique. So, in the final example here, hybrid geometry. So the idea here is that you have a model which consists of some CAD parts, some other description. The other description could be level set or it could be like density, for instance. So here is the mesh. This is the domain where we're going to optimization. Here we have some isogeometric analysis going on. This is the cut elements so all over the place here. This is the starting configuration. This is the optimized, where we have found the optimized solution. This is the stresses here, and again we use uh, CYQ2. And now we can replace parts. So, given this model here, we start replacing parts with CAD parts. So, for instance, here we have replaced these two beams with isogeometric parametric parts. And then we can solve again. 
and all sits together here using the Nietzsche interface conditions with stabilization. So the idea is that you gradually go from this level set type model over to a full CAD model. Okay, so that's just to zoom in. And the final example, um, the most common method in topology optimization is that you actually use density. Okay? So density, that would be basically constant value in each element. That's what you seek to optimize. So we have a similar situation. We have a cut mesh here. You have a I2 geometric parts outside. And uh, you can see there is sort of an angle. It's, we get these cut elements up here at, at, the, at the interface. And you get the optimized solution. So here you can see, I think this is, this is kind of intuitive here, because we saw earlier that the optimal solution, it's never curved. It's always straight, right? So what you try to do is to make this beam straight. That's why you get the other arc, like this. Mm -hmm. You can see that, you see it's a little bit blurry here, because now it's not sharp, now it's just diffuse. Okay, so finally, short outlook. I think uh, the area of topology and shape optimization is very interesting. So for us it's a new area, but uh, we're shortly doing elasticity problems. But I mean the big gain when you do these cut techniques, in particular if you have a good representation of the surfaces, is where you, where you actually want to have detailed uh, analysis done close to the surface. That could be like a, in a fluid mechanics problem, or it could be uh, in a stress optimization. So this idea of hybrid geometry I think is interesting because in practice when you do topology optimization you get something and then you put that to a designer and he is going to build you a CAD model and then typically you do some analysis on the CAD and you do uh, changes on the CAD. So you want to sort of connect these two uh, models at an early stage. Uh, so Peter showed some examples where we have this track, uh, simulation of flowing tracks. So we have some work coming out where we look at sort of an abstract framework with multi-dimensional domains. So these are domains that basically are built up by curves, surfaces, and bulk domains. Okay? And then you get a coupled system of PDs on that domain. And you can solve like elliptic problems, hyperbolic problems, and so on. Um, so I've seen that this is an area which is coming up uh, in, uh, in sort of porous media research. Um, you still have three minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Very good. I want to be in time. Yeah. Sorry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Shut <laughs> off. I've not finished yet. <laughs> I have my three minutes. Um, so that's an area which, which we think is kind of interesting. Uh, and, um, of course, adaptivity. <laughs> was mentioned yesterday. We, we have not done a lot of work on that, but we have started a little bit, so that's coming up as well. Um, the geometric computation and quadrature, of course, this is, uh, this is also something which is, uh, which is kind of interesting or important for, for, the, for, the, for the method. And I mentioned sort of this high accuracy local stresses. So I think if you look at sort of what's known today about cut elements, it's actually quite weak norms. Typically it's the energy norm in the L2 setting, and then you have like uh, L2 norms. So, uh, so we have some work coming out on LP norms, where we go all the way up to infinity uh, for, for the gradient. So this is possible to do, but of course, it's quite technical analysis. 
But I think this, this is important to get sort of local accuracy close to the boundary. In many applications this is very important. And uh, the effect of stabilization, the stabilization procedure, or uh, maybe the precondition and so on, on, on these quantities locally, I think is also an important question. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.